some statistics to understand the magnitude of the problem. There are 44, more than 44,000 confirmed suicides in the United States every year. <coughs> That's up from about 30,000, um, well, about a little over 10 years ago. It was around 30,000. Now it's over 44,000 every year. In 2015, it was 44,193. There's a lag in statistics. By the time they, the counties compile their reports and the state compiles their reports, there's about a two-year gap, usually, in the, in the statistics we have available to us. So that's why they're 2015. That's over 121 suicides per day, every day, five every hour, one every 11.9 minutes, round the clock, somebody taking their life. Now, they don't do it in that order, but that's what it amounts to statistically. Starting in 2009, more people now die from suicide than die in traffic accidents. 44,000 by suicide, 35,000 by traffic accidents in the year 2015. The group at highest risk of attempting suicide is, who would you guess? They're in there, but the group at highest risk of attempting suicide is white females. They are 10 times more likely to attempt suicide than men, 10 times. The group at highest risk of succeeding in suicide is white males. Ages 15 to 25 and 55 to 65. A couple comments there. First of all, why, if women are 10 times more likely to attempt, why are men more likely to succeed? Because men choose more lethal means. Women are often found, often take pills, and are able to be recovered. Ages 15 to 25 and 55 to 65, why are those dates significant? 15 to 25, coming to the end of your high school years, transition, maybe college, maybe work, career. That's a major transition in life, isn't it? And then 55 to 65, it's also a major transition in life, is it not? You're coming toward the end of career and, uh, and really toward the end of life. And so those transitions are very dangerous times, both for young people and for older people. The interesting thing is that now, and I mean in the last couple of years, we are trending downward age-wise in both of those categories. We are seeing more and more suicides younger than 15. The youngest suicide I've been to was 11. But I know of some that were 10 and 9 taking their own lives. And the 55 to 65 is now pushing down into the 40s. So these are some trends that we need to be aware of and we need to be thinking about. You're not safe if you're 40. There's that possibility you need to realize your friends may be struggling with some of these very issues. Suicide death rates are the measurement published of suicides per 100,000. So in the U.S., the, the, the national rate <clears throat> is, is, of suicide is 13.8 suicides for every 100,000 people. In Alaska, it's 27. Wyoming, it's 26. Montana, 26. New Mexico, 24. Idaho, 21, and you go down the list, Colorado is number nine. 
with 20 suicides per 100,000 population. And the state of Washington, where I'm from, is 15.9. And the number in parentheses is the number of suicides in the state, the number, not the raw number. So in Colorado, in 2015, there were almost 1,100 people who died by suicide. What do you notice about the top five? Hmm? Okay, they're all rural. Uh, lower populations. The, in terms of the raw numbers, the states with higher population, California, New York, etc., they have many, many more suicides. But the percentage per 100,000 is higher in these rural states. And this tends to occur in rural states because there is a lack of resources in those states. Resources are focused in the cities, and the population is not focused in that city. The second thing you might notice is these are all western states. All western states. Suicide is more acceptable in the western states. Denver County, Statistics from 2015, suicide ranked as the second leading cause of non-natural death for all ages in 2015, and the raw number was 98, behind accidental deaths. Let me just explain. Natural deaths account for the majority of deaths virtually everywhere. People that grow old and die, they die of disease, it's natural causes. Suicide is number two in Denver. One and a half times traffic accident deaths. In Denver, Denver County and city, firearms were the most popular means. 34% of the people who took their lives did it with a weapon. Followed closely by hanging, 32%. Jumping and the use of drugs, legal and illegal, were both about 10%. Again, this is a trend we've been watching for some time. The advance of hanging as a favorable means of taking one's own life. The highest number of suicides in Denver were by middle-aged adults. Not teens, as you might think. Middle-aged adults, ages 41 to 60. Ages 21 to 40 were the next bracket. Teenagers came after that. And we know this was a 10-year study that was done in San Diego County that for every completed suicide, there are, are an estimated 25 attempted suicides. That's an enormous number of people. And they're showing up, many of them, at the emergency room and some of them are not being reported at all. Now, the church, when I, when I did research, I was thinking we were in Denver, but I realized we're not. The church here is in Centennial, which is, I believe, in Arapahoe County. Did I get that right? So Arapahoe County, I have to commend your uh, coroner's office. Uh, they get their reports out early. The statistics from 2016, just last year. Suicide ranked as the second leading cause of non-natural death for all ages, 115 in Arapahoe County, behind accidental deaths, and more than two times traffic accident deaths. <clears throat> in Arapahoe County, firearms accounted for 53% of completed suicides, followed by hanging at 24% and drugs at 13%. Among females, and this again is interesting, firearms and drugs were tied for the most popular, followed by hanging. We've seen women increasingly going to more lethal means rather than relying upon medications. 76% of the 
suicides in Arapahoe County were male, and the highest age group was younger, 21 to 60. So they were adult. Why did so many people take their own lives? Let me offer some reasons. These are the reasons that I have either read in suicide notes or heard from suicidal subjects or been told about by people who were related to someone who committed suicide. One is anger. People become angry. They're, they're fed up with life. They're fed up with whatever it may be that they're dealing with, and they choose to opt out. Jealousy. Jealousy. On a Christmas Eve a few years ago, I was called out to the scene of a suicide. An unmarried couple who, had been, who were living together had gone to a local bar to celebrate. And while they were at the bar on Christmas Eve, the boy in the equation, the guy in the equation, became convinced that his girlfriend was flirting. She insists she was not flirting. He says, yes, you are. And they argued in the bar. They left the bar. He grabbed her by the arm. They went out, jumped in the truck, drove home. They argued all the way <clears throat> over whether she was flirting or not. When they got into their really small home, he grabbed her. He sat her down in a chair, duct taped her to the chair, and he said, I'm going to show you. And he tried to hang himself. I'll show you. You kind of wonder, what are you thinking? You may show her, but if you take any pleasure in that, you're not going to be there to enjoy whatever pleasure there may be in responding to her jealousy by your revenge. He failed. He tried again. He failed. The third time, he succeeded. She was able to tip over the chair and wriggle out of the duct tape and ran to the neighbor's house, and that's when we were called in. Jealousy can lead to suicide. Revenge can be a reason for suicide. You've hurt me in some way. I'll hurt you. It doesn't matter that it takes my life. I'll hurt you. Depression can be a cause or a contributing factor in suicide. Self-pity. I'm so sorry about my life. My life is a mess. Everybody else has everything. I have nothing. Suicide is the ultimate act of autonomy, the, the, the fist in the face of God. Suicide, some people take their lives because of a loss of status, <clears throat> because of a loss of title, because of a loss of income, because of a loss of power. Some people take their lives because of loneliness. Surveys consistently show that the number one fear that people have is the fear of being alone. And loneliness is not a matter of We've got one person in this section over here. Nobody else is over there with her. I don't know if she's lonely. <laughs> but, um, but you can be lonely if, if this room is filled with all of the people you can cram into it, sitting and standing. You can be in the midst of that crowd and still feel very isolated, still feel very lonely. That's the number one fear that people consistently cite. 